So hi everyone, my name is Dmitro. I'm business development manager at Exxon, a software engineering company from Ukraine. I'm responsible for developing relationships with clients at Exxon and increasing their profitability with our services. And I'll start my presentation. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Um, so quick facts about Exxon. Uh, Exxon is a full stack software engineering company from Ukraine. Also, we have branches in Estonia and uh, the United States. We have been working on the IT industry for more than six years. During this period, we completed more than 100 projects in 17 different countries within marketing, automotive, educational, insurance, sports industries. And there are 80 people in our company today, uh, 55 of them software engineers. When I started working here two years ago, there were just 45 people, so we are growing rapidly. And fortunately, the market started reviving and we continue our hiring. And today I'm going to talk with you about uh, uh, software development outsourcing from the vendor's perspective. What the vendor expect uh, from the customer, uh, what nuances you may have, and uh, all uh, these questions. So basically, uh, why companies start outsource? First, uh, from my opinion, the most frequently reasons are, first of all, is uh, expertise. When you don't develop software by yourself, but you want to find someone who will help you to develop your solution. Uh, the second one is the speed. When you develop your solution, but to want uh, to accelerate development at some point, because it's not a secret that uh, today's market as competitive as never before, and you have to move faster than your competitor if you want to win the battle. And of course, price. Uh, it's not a secret that uh, prices for software development in the Eastern Europe and in Asia are much lower, for example, in, than in Western Europe or in the uh, North America or other countries. And in particular, we have conducted a research at Exxon and compared prices in different regions. So you can uh, see that uh, Eastern Europe's prices much lower than in other regions. Also, here is a QR code on the bottom. You can scan and see the full research. And also I'll share this research, the link to this research after my presentation, so you will be able to take a look. And when you reach out to the vendor, they can offer you different models of cooperation according to your needs. And uh, the most used ones are team augmentation, dedicated team, and project-based. Uh, team augmentation is most suitable for clients uh, who has uh, their own tech teams, but want to strengthen them at some point. For example, to add additional developers with uh, skills that they don't have or speed up their development. So this model is most suitable for them. The second one, dedicated team, is most suitable for clients who, got, who are going to build a uh, complex project and going to build it during a long period of time. And in this case, you will be managing this, this team directly. They, this team will be fully engaged in your project, so you have the full control. And also, you will be able to get lower prices from the vendor because when you hire the, a lot of people and for a long period of time, vendors can offer you discounts. And of course, it might be risky to hire the whole team uh, when you don't know the vendor. So you can start with one, two developers, just check how they work, and then just expand uh, your team. Uh, in particular, three of our clients started to work with us with one or two developers, and now they have say, from seven to 10 developers in their team. So uh, it's really important to check how the vendor work before you start uh, working with them on a full capacity. And the third one is the most popular in our company. It's project-based. Uh, it's when the client want to build uh, like a certain 
a solution with a certain functionality, it just asks the vendor to develop this solution. And I will dive deep into this model because uh, around 70% of our projects are based on this model. And uh, usually clients reach out to different vendors with their request to estimate how much it would be costly to develop their solution. And some, for example, sometimes uh, we at Exxon have 10 or 12 different uh, competitors that are preparing offers for the same uh, deal, for the same solution. And from my opinion, it's not productive, unproductive because every vendor will try to ask you to, uh, to set up a call with you to clarify all the nuances about your solution or will prepare the, the, a big list of questions to clarify all of these nuances. And you as a client just don't have enough time to manage all of these requests, all of those questions, and it won't allow you to choose uh, the vendor properly. So in my opinion, uh, five or maximum seven vendors, different vendors will be in, enough to accomplish this. And you as a client should uh, carefully choose those five, seven vendors. Uh, first of all, you should check their expertise or whether they completed projects similar to you uh, before. And when I talk about expertise, similar expertise, I don't mean that they should work, uh, work with the, the same company as yours. Uh, because when you want to develop, for example, implement video calls for insurance company or marketing company, it, it doesn't mean it, it, uh, it's not important for the developer because the code base will be the same so you should choose you should check whether they uh, developed the similar functionality before uh, on their website they use uh, vendors usually have uh, the page with uh, completed projects or just google uh, other independent resources and check their expertise when they uh, when you check, uh, ch check their expertise uh, pay attention to uh, testimonials from their previous clients. Most uh, vendors have uh, separate pages on their website with those testimonials. And also, uh, you can use independent resources. Uh, one of the most famous is clutch.co. It's independent resources, resource. And on this website, uh, uh, clients leave feedbacks about their cooperation with different vendors from different countries and using different uh, filters you can uh, find the needed vendor and check their uh, testimonials from previous clients and uh, then when you choose five seven vendors uh, reach out to them and ask them to uh, estimate how much it would be costed to develop your solution and but be, be careful before sharing sensitive data b about your solution uh, and uh, at the start sign the non-disclosure agreement with the vendor and uh, signing an NDA with the vendor will allow you to set up mutually beneficial cooperation with them from the start and protect your intellectual property rights so uh, but you can't even imagine how often we get uh, requests from uh, clients just like how would be costly to develop the solution like Instagram or Uber or combination of those solutions. And you should try to avoid those requests. Uh, first, of, first of all, you should ask yourself whether it's really reasonable to develop the solution that is already exist on the market or why will user will switch from those solutions to yours. And the second one that uh, the, those questions uh, clearly shows uh, for the vendor that you didn't, you haven't done your client's homework. What does it mean? Before reaching out to, uh, to the vendor, uh, think over your idea. What exactly would you like to build? What benefits will you get from this uh, solution? How will you will monetize this solution? Uh, what approximate functionalities your solution will have, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera would be great if you can prepare uh, the detailed requirements, the detailed list of requirements to your solution, but very often clients don't have like experience, previous experience in software as a development and they don't, uh, they can't uh, prepare like a proper description. And it's not a problem because very often 
and uh, it's not a problem because uh, like the brief description will be enough and very often vendor will offer their services to help you to describe your solution they uh, vendors have business analysis who work closely with the client and help them to describe their uh, solution clearly realize how and what they want to develop and uh, suggest best practices that they had in their previous experience uh, of course uh, those business analysis phase might, might be paid so, uh, services uh, but when you want to develop a really complex solution you should take uh, into consideration business analysis because it will help you to uh, save money in the future with the business analysis from the start you will have uh, like uh, the detailed description of your, of your project preliminary design and budget with a small variance but when you start to work without this phase you can uh, get a uh, much higher price in the future but of course if you want to develop like simple website or mobile application uh, you don't need to like to go through the business analysis because it's a simply project but when you develop a complex project you should take into consideration business analysis uh, so and uh, when you get uh, offers uh, when uh, client uh, when vendors estimate your uh, solution estimate how much it would be costed to develop your solution pay attention how they do this whether they ask questions whether they clarify all nuances because uh, some vendors just uh, um, prepare the offer without any um, uh, like investigation process and this offers uh, in the future you will have a huge variance so pay attention how they prepare this offer and when you get all offers don't just start working with the cheapest one <laughs> really because you should check whether they included all expenses in their offer uh, for example project management business analysis devops engineer quality insurance there are a lot of other expenses except of development efforts and the best way to check this is to set up a call with each vendor and uh, check whether they understood your idea properly whether they clearly clearly realize what exactly you want to build because many clients many clients just ask to send them the final price and don't want to, to set up a call with you because they are afraid that uh, you will start to sell them but uh, this call is more important for the client because yeah, this call will allow them to understand to realize whether the vendor understands their idea properly so you need to spend some time uh, with each vendor and realize how they work how they communicate with you how uh, how did they whether their reaction was fast on your different requests etc etc and feel whether it's comfortable to work for them and only after that uh, to choose the vendor yeah you you may pay a little bit more than the cheapest uh, proposition but you will save your time you will save your money in the future and uh, so that's basically all what i wanted to tell there is my contact information so if you have any questions in the future you can contact me and i'll answer everything there is also qr code just scan it and <laughs> you you will have my contact on your phone